lots to discuss today on Acoustic Atmosphere. We begin with the Haas effect, then check out the 3D audio effect. Finally we discover the secrets of stereo sound with phase acoustics. Enjoy! I will be demonstrating the Haas effect. Uh, that's spelled H-A-A-S and what it is is that the human brain will interpret early reflections within a window of about 30 milliseconds as indicating a very wide source as opposed to thinking thinking them or perceiving of them as actual reflections now in sonic field this is quite easy to achieve uh, if you go over to nerd central and search for Hass Effect, you will see the script that I use to generate this sample. What I'm going to do is mix a mono dry signal with a 20 millisecond delay on the left channel and a 25 millisecond delay on the right channel. That difference is very critical to getting the Hass Effect. And then what I'm going to do is take that from a minus 99 dB input on the wet, on the, on the reflections, i.e. basically nothing, up through uh, minus 6, minus 3, 0, plus 3, plus 6, and plus 99. And you'll see how the mono in the centre of the sound starts to spread out all the way until my voice sounds as though it is actually in both your ears and there's no density in the centre. And this is very much a way of, for instance, if you had a singer singing and you wanted to put them in the centre of a mix and you wanted to push the guitars out to the side to give a, a breadth and a width to your mix, then this is a way of doing it. It's not actually giving any three-dimensional depth. That can be done with reverb and we'll be looking at that more later. And it isn't going to give a massive sound. That can be done with chorus and reverb. But what it does do is allow you to specifically clear out the center and or broaden a, a broaden the mix to give it a much wider sonic field okay which oddly enough is the name of the code so let's go for it you'll hear it moving from the center progressively out to the sides hello and welcome to sonic field hello and welcome to sonic field Hello and welcome to Sonic Field. 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 Hello and welcome to Sonic Field.
we tend to think that stereo is all about volume. So if we have two ears, two channels. If this channel is louder than that channel for a particular sound, then our brains tell us that we're on that side. That's simply only a tiny part of the story because sound actually travels. And the middle range of human hearing, the sort of 200 to uh, hertz to two kilohertz area, uh, we, our ears are actually able to process another aspect of sound which is called phase. So let's try and explain what phase is about. Imagine there's a sound over here and that's actually uh, a pressure wave like the wave on the surface of the sea but instead of going up and down it's actually compressing and what we call rarefracting air. So this wave comes across like this and it first hits this ear, my right ear, and then travels across my head and then hits that ear at the speed of sound, some 730 miles an hour at sea level. Now the difference, because a person's head is quite wide compared to those frequencies, so the wavelength may be that, so you can actually start to tell a significant difference in pressure between one ear and the other as that wave goes across and we call that a phase difference. Now, the interesting thing is that most of the human senses are very slow. So your eye won't really tell anything much above, uh, uh, in, much faster than 100 milliseconds. And the sense of touch is quite a lot slower than that. But the ability to tell phase between the two ears is down into the... That's annoying. Excuse me while I change the card. Right, I just replaced the card in my camcorder, so here we go again. There we go. Right, now, the ability for the brain to tell phase is in the millisecond or shorter region, which is quite an amazing achievement for an electrochemical system. So, let's have a demonstration of this. I've set up a computer down here, which will play a tune, or a note, 440 hertz, which is tuning A, and it's going to play that with both the left and right channels exactly the same volume. Then it's going to play both the left and right channels exactly the same volume again, but shifting the phase of one of the channels. Then we'll swap over to shifting the phase the other way, and then we'll go back to the middle and we'll do that a few times. Now if you're wearing earphones or you've got your head fairly close to uh, speakers on a laptop, etc., which are stereo, you should be able to hear the sound move from the centre, I think, over to the right, over to the left, and back to the centre. But bear in mind, the volume on both channels is continuously identical all the time. So let's see if this works. Excuse me while I set it all up. I press that button. There, did you hear the difference there as it moved from side to side? Now, I promise you, there's absolutely no uh, volume change at any point, apart from when those little clicks where it changes from one waveform to the next. The only difference is phase. Uh, I will actually have a go at showing you those phase changes. What I'll do, I'll zoom right in over here, which you can't see, of course. And then I will bring the camcorder up, and you can have a look. So here we actually have the computer as it was playing. Over on this section of the screen, we can see that the left and right channel are in lockstep. So these waves up and down represent air pressure when the signal is actually played. So that's high pressure and that's low pressure. Now when the signal changed, we can see in this side that the high pressure is arriving on the right hand channel slightly sooner than the high pressure is arriving. Move my hand out of the way of the microphone. The, the high pressure is arriving on the right hand channel slightly sooner than the right the high pressure is arriving on the left hand channel. And this actually tricks the brain into thinking that sound is coming from your right hand side. Even though there is absolutely no difference in volume at all. As you can see, you should hear the signal change from centre to right. See? If we zoom in on this section, 
Okay. Now we can see the signal on the is arriving on the left sooner than the right, so we should hear it moving from right to left. So let's play that. Yep. And then back to the middle. So if you've recorded sound in stereo with two microphones and you're expecting it to sorry, I'm just gonna have to fiddle with these knobs over here. There we go. If you've recorded the heater came on, it made a horrible, horrible noise in the background, I do apologize. If you've recorded sound in stereo and you expect to be able to move the center of that sound left or right just with volume, you simply can't do that. You will have a volume effect Yes, it, but eventually if you try and move it too far, your brain will get confused between the phase, which you will have recorded correctly using the microphones, and the volume change, which you're trying to introduce. So the only real way of recording stereo properly is to record stereo properly, unless you're going to spend an awful lot of time messing around with uh, very detailed aspects of the phase and the delay which isn't going to work if you have a wide spectrum sound anyway. That's quite a fascinating area and I hope you found it interesting. And the only other thing I'd like to say is you might notice that I'm using a very odd microphone. It is a vintage microphone. It's a Claricon from the late 60s or early 70s. And they are were cheap. Japanese microphones, uh, which were not very good at all, but I absolutely adore the case on this one, so I just bought it from the US, had it shipped over here and replaced the element, and I put a fairly broad cardioid, uh, low frequency response, smoothish sort of element in there, which is quite nice for recording videos because A, it's a stage prop, and B, it has a good recording area. So I hope you found my video on phase interesting and i'll speak to you next time bye i hope you have enjoyed this episode of freak physics please like share and subscribe to help freak physics continue to provide free content to see more go to freakphysics.com